So today's discussion will be uh, on double categories. And again, from a user perspective, I'm very new to this uh, as well. Um, I've been spending a lot of time to learn, um, but I don't want to in any way present that I'm an expert, but I'm trying as a practitioner to share what I have learned so that we can proceed on to double theories and proceed on to understanding the CAT Colab code base and start to work uh, at least at a pragmatic level to extend it, even while we're more deeply understanding all the different lines of opportunity that double theories open up, uh, double categories and double theories uh, open up, which are many, diverse, and powerful. Um, so I'd like to, to this end, I'd, I'd like to switch to uh, my, my, my screen, because I, I pulled together some slides, or rather I had, you know, cobbled together some slides, mostly from other people with appropriate attribution that I, I want to use to introduce this notion. And, you know, we'll go over this again, some I'm sure, but each time, I mean, it's taken me you know, many, many times of, of, of watching certain videos and studying certain sources um, to understand this. And so it's it's not a bad thing to have some sort of spiral approach where you start it roughly and then you go more depth, et cetera. So double, double categories. Um, uh, th these are some notes from a, a discussion which John Boss had um, way back in the day when you know, I talk with them about these different um, ways of bringing another dimension of mapping um, to to categories. Um, with, with regular categories, of course, we have objects and morphisms. And when we come to 2D category theory, if I could use that term, and I'm not sure I'm using it correctly, whether it's two categories, bi categories, or double categories, one of the foremost hallmarks is we have this extra dimension in the sense that instead of it just being objects, zero dimensional morphisms, one dimensional, we have two dimensional things, mappings from morphisms to morphisms. And there's many ways of that, that people have tried to, to capture and, 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 and to, to, to capture that general desire. Um, uh, and they go by names that are sometimes kind of confusing. Two categories, which have this kind of globular shape where we have one morphism that can be mapped to another morphism. Maybe think like functor maps. You know, we have maybe a, a category. We have a functor between categories. And this is a natural transformation that maps from functor to functor or something like that, just as in kind of a, a idea. Um, uh, uh, kind of thing to gesture at. Um, and then we have an, another um, uh, another structure beyond this, which is by categories. And you notice John shows there being a, 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 a monic mapping between these. The two categories sort of are a sub piece of, 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 of the, the by category picture. The by category picture um, you you can have uh, uh, composition of two morphisms that are when you of these one morphisms um, uh, that are that are um, uh, it's it's associative not on the nose but it, it has kind of a a lax um, thing up to a invertible. Two morphisms, so you can have, um, uh, as I understand it, sort of one thing composing uh, with another, and and then you, um, instead of being associative like it is in a two category, these ones, um, so you can um, have F, G, and H, maybe in a row, um, put aside this G, F, G, H, and and that's, you know, FG and then H is the same as F and then G and H, and then G, G, G then H. Um, here, it's associative, not on the nose, but like up to uh, an, an invertible. 
two two morphisms. So you it it's not it's exactly the same, but it's um you can go from one to the other invertibly. So it's like an an, an it has some flavor of an isomorphism, right? That that you can go from one to the other. Um, now, double categories, the focus of our work, um, have go beyond this kind of globular structure to have two types of morphisms, a horizontal morphism, which we're going to treat as, as lax um, in its, or, or 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 pseudo, it's not going to be associative uh, up to um, you know, on the nose. It'll be up to um, some some comparison cell, and then vertical one morphisms, which uh, can be composed vertically. So you have sort of horizontal composed horizontally, but with some wiggle room, and then you have strict vertical morphisms, is what you see in most of these categories, and then you have a two dimensional cell within frame a frame that um if you have a frame you may or may not have a two-dimensional cell on it that brings it up this additional dimension uh of mapping um so let's talk about these uh two categories okay um uh and uh sorry these double categories excuse me um okay so we have objects we have I'm going to call them vertical arrows, and I'll call them arrows. With and and we're going to talk about them as if it's always the case. It's not always the case, but but it, as I understand from John, it's kind of the norm now. Most commonly, you have strict composition along arrows, and pro arrows, you have this kind of loose composition. Um, you have this the, this kind of pseudo. Um, this wiggle room. It's not associative on the nose, it's associative up to a certain comparator. Um, and then you have these two cells and they, they're surrounded by a frame or a boundary. Um, but not every frame has a two cell. No, no, no. A frame is necessary, but it's not sufficient for a two cell. Um, and notice <clears throat> the question or not whether it has a two cell, is specific, and this is really important. It took me a long time to understand this until John, you know, confirmed it. It's specific to a particular morphism here, a particular so a particular pro arrow, particular pro arrow here, like shown with with this these horizontal pro arrows. It's kind of loose, loose ones, and then uh, an arrow here and arrow there. It's not that. We have kind of in a boundary, all possible ones here on the upper side, all possible ones down here, and all possible ones here. And, and the question is whether or not a cell exists for that. No, 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 It's It's very specific to like M, N, F, G. And there might be a cell here, but not for, you know, M prime and, uh, and N and F and G, or not with M prime and N prime and F and G, et cetera. Um, so it's the question of whether or not there's a cell whether there is a cell or not, is specific to the particular pro arrows, these particular ones within this, what we might call the home set between these, the pro arrow home set. Um, the question is, does it apply for them? So for example, some cell in some category, double categories, it might require this to commute on either side. And that's very specific, right? Condition involving these, these kind of morphisms. Um, it's not like, Oh, you know, anytime you have X, Y, W, and Z on the corners, you get a cell. No, 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 no. It's it's very specific to these particular ones. Um, that took me a long time to, to understand. Okay, if you listen to Eugenia Cheng's thing, she, she will note, and Evan, you know, notes this as well, and you hear it commonly, that um double categories um uh are internal categories in cat, meaning there's a category of objects and there's a category of, 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 so instead of having a set of objects and a set of morphisms, we have a category of objects, meaning we have objects within it and morphisms within that and a category of morphisms. So object within it, that's a pro arrow and morphism within it, that's a two cell. Um, so 
so we have these kind of um um uh and we have this relationship uh between these where so there's a category of category of objects but it's a category so what is objects and morphisms those are the vertical morphisms there's a category of morphisms but the objects there are pro arrows they are objects but they have a source and target hence this map and there's two cells and they also have a source and target s and t are functors by goodness they're functors they're mappings between these categories and so the functors map an object here to an object here okay an object here is a pro arrow and its source is a is a particular its source is a particular object over over here um uh it has a target um you know this one here so this would be its source and this would be its target of the 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 object here which is a pro arrow horizontal arrow a loose loose one and then the two cells here these things that look kind of like like this when when we have a cell here they have a domain that's the top thing in a codomain but then they have a source and a target the source for so so morphism in this and b in this category of morphism in the category of morphism um that's a two cell and its source well it maps morphism here to morphism here so its source will be a morphism here and a morphism here does anyone remember what this is what's a morphism here in this category it's a vertical arrow one of these so this one has objects as its objects arrow vertical arrows as its morphisms this one has pro arrows as its objects but they have a source and target because we have this functor equipped to this category is equipped with this um and and then uh, this double category is equipped with a source and target and then uh the the two cells the morphisms here have a source which so a morphism here has a source as a functor maps morphism to morphisms so a morphism here is a is a one arrow so this is would be the source of this of this cell and this is the target of this cell this is its domain this is its codomain so it kind of goes down and kind of to the right you could you could think of it okay um uh, and you can watch eugenia cheng um, um characterization this is from evan um so again we have the cluster reiterating it but it's worth going over many times Okay, so it's a pseudo category in cat. It's an internal category in cat. So we have this is the category of of objects in vertical morphisms. This is the category D one is the category of object. The objects here are the vertical arrows. The morphisms here are the horizontal. Oh, excuse me, the two cells. Um, the, these these sort of things. Um, and we have a source going. Those are the functors. And each one of these. Each object here as an object here that's its ID one. So an object here is an is a simple object in the category. It's like one of these or one of these. So each one of those has a this is a, this is a functor. So it maps objects to objects. So it maps an object here to an object here. What's an object here? Anyone remember? This is objects and vertical arrows. This one, what are the serving as the objects in this? They're the pro arrows, these guys. Those are the objects here. The morphisms here are these cells. Okay. Um, and so pro arrows are objects, they just happen to have a source and target, as as Evan says. Just like an open system is an object. An open stock flow diagram is an object, but it happens to have a source and target. Think about that. Similar idea. These these guys, the objects here, so objects here are mapped by this functor to objects here, which is a pro arrow. 
So for an object here, there's a pro arrow that's its identity pro arrow. It just goes from itself to itself. That's what that identity is. And a morphism here. What's a morphism here? Who can remember what's a morphism here? A morphism in this category. Right. So it's a no morphism here is a arrow, vertical arrow, vertical one. The pro arrows are the objects here. The pro arrows are the horizontal. Here, the morphisms of this are the vertical ones. Those are just the plain old strict morphisms. Um, yeah, it's, arrow. It's, it's, arrow. it's an arrow. It's these guys here. So every arrow is going to be mapped by this functor to an arrow here. What's an arrow here? Anyone remember? So, so a, a vertical arrow has associated with it by this ID, an arrow here. What's an arrow in this category? Remember, this is objects. <laughs> there must be pro arrows, D1. No, no, the objects here are pro arrows. The morphisms here are, and maps morphisms to morphism. Morphism here is a vertical arrow. Morphism here is a two cell. The object here is the pro arrow. Pro arrows are objects that happen to have a source and target, is, is the way that Evan, Evan frames it. They're first and foremost objects, just like an open stock flow diagram is first and foremost an object. It's, it's a thing, but it happens to have a source and target. Keep, keep that in mind. Maybe that, maybe that helps. Um, so these objects are pro arrows. The morphisms here, and morphism here in this in D0, which is a vertical arrow, gets mapped to a morphism here, which is a two cell that serves as its identity. What would that look like? Well, the two cell would have this on this side, the same arrow on this side, and the same object here and here. And so it would have an identity, I think, and an identity here will be just sort of an identity two cell. Um, uh, every arrow has an identity to self. Uh -huh. Now, beyond that, the plot thickens. Check this out. When you have two end-to-end -end items in D1 that are joined at a certain point in D0, you have a functor that maps them to D1. So, so let's think this through. So, so suppose we consider some D1. So this D0 is the category of, it's an internal category um, uh, in cat, meaning this is a category. It has objects and vertical arrows. This is a category. It has, it has pro arrows and two cells. Okay, so let's let's consider, okay, D1. Let's consider the objects here. These are the pro arrows. So if we have a pro arrow here and a pro arrow here, and they are joined together at, they, they share a common object in this guy, which is, what's an object in D0? Anyone remember? What's an object in this category? It's a... Vertical arrows, is that correct? No, no, no. The, the oh, morphisms oh. are vertical arrows here. The objects here are plain old objects. They're just these guys. It's just these guys. This is the category of objects and vertical arrows. This is the category of pro arrows as objects and two cells. So here we have an object. So if we have uh, object in D1, which is a pro arrow, one of these guys. And we have another object in D1, which is a pro arrow, another one of those. And they're joined by a common thing. They're, they're, they're joined at a common thing, namely an object here, which is an object. So if you have a pro arrow goes X to Y and another one that goes Y to A, um, end to end, we can compose them horizontally. Horizontally, that's what this is. And get a pro arrow. This is a functor. But with, with pro arrows, it's not gonna be 
on the nose necessarily. Most of the time it's Lucy. It's like we, we compose them and we get another one that um, uh, can be compared to, to, to these two. Um, uh, it's not necessarily on the nose that we get this. Um, uh, but okay, let's let's follow this through. This is a functor. This is composite horizontal composition is a functor. Now let's consider D1. It's a functor. So so we it maps morphisms to morphisms. What's a morphism in D1? Who can remember what a morphism in D1 is? It's a what? Two cell. D0 is the category of objects and vertical morphisms. The objects of D0 are objects. They're these guys. The morphisms of this are the vertical arrows. D1, the objects are what? We just said it. Pro arrows. They're first and foremost objects. They happen to have a source and target. And the morphisms here are what? What are the morphisms? They're two cells. They're two cells. This is a category of objects and vertical morphisms. This is the, the category of pro arrows and two cells. Okay, so if we have a two cell, one of these guys here and a two cell here and they're joined by a morphism from D0. What's a morphism from D0? You tell me, what's a morphism here? What is it? It's a... Uh... It's a uh, what? What's a morphism in this category? Like the from X to Y in the previous slide? Yeah, yeah. Vertical yeah. errors, well, No, right? it's, it's these ones. The vertical, yeah, I, I, vertical. Yes, I, right. Yeah, vertical. Yeah. Yeah. Vertical, yeah. That's what, that's what's, what's, what's here. This is the, this is the category of objects and vertical errors. Mm. Yes. Um, mm. So if, if we have a two cell here, a morphism, and we have a two cell here, and they are joined at a common point by a vertical arrow. So we have an alpha and we have a beta next to it and they're joined by a common one. We can compose them to get a morphism here, which is another two cell, but it's not on the nose. It's it's up to uh, uh, a, a certain comparator. Um, okay, so, um, So this is this is called everyone calls it external or horizontal composition, um, and there's a identity too. I, I guess I don't. Um, yeah, well, well, that's what this is. This is the identity. This is a, a functor mapping objects to objects of object here to an object here, which is a pro arrow. Yeah, identity pro arrow for that object. We said that earlier. It's, it's like goes from here to itself. It's just identity. And it maps a morphism here to a morphism here, which is the identity. So a morphism here is a vertical one, and it has an identity, one of these that just um, is identity for. Okay. Right. I know. I know. It, it's, it's confusing. Um, so maybe this will help. This is from Doretta Pronk. I, I actually really like, or Doretta Pronk at, at Dalhousie, by the way. Um, fellow Canadian and never more grateful than today, I'm sure. Um, uh, so I really like this slide. Let's build our strength by going through the repetitions. Okay. So here, there's a different way of organizing the information. Here, we have arrows in C0. Remember, uh, she calls it C0, the, the, this category. Arrows here are the morphisms here. 
And if we have two morphisms here, and, and sorry, we have a vertical arrow and another vertical arrow joined by a common point between them, which is an object from C0. What's an object? What's an object in this category? It's a what? What's an object here? It's a object. It's just a plain old object. It's one of these things. So if we have two vertical morphisms, say X to W, and say W to A, they're two end-to-end -end ones, and they're joined by a common object. That's what this is. We, we just compose them. We just get another vertical, and it's strict as can be, as she says. It's just plain old standard composition within this category. You just compose. I mean, that's what it's a category. You can compose the morphisms here. And the morphisms here, what are the morphisms in this category? What are the morphisms here? The objects of the objects are just objects. The morphisms here are what? Vertical. Vertical arrows. <laughs> so you can compose in this category. And it's played old strict. And it's all your normal happy category. And it's all familiar. Happy, happy. So this is just normal composition in the vertical direction. Nothing fancy, nothing loosey, just plain old. This is a category, and you can compose within the category, and, and you get and you have associativity that's strict. Right? Um, so if you have F and then G vertically and then H, F and then G. And then H is the same as, same morphism as F and then G then H. Mm. Um, and each of these arrows, the vertical one, has a source, you know, um, and it has a target. You know, um, um, uh, that that are that are objects here, and each object here has one of these arrows associated with it that is a identity one. So this is all happy, familiar thing. It's just your normal category. Each morphism vertically has a source, X, a target you know, that it's going to its domain code. I mean, and, and then each one of these has an identity vertical arrow. Happy, happy. Just like in a regular category, each object has an identity morphism. These are just the normal morphisms. Should be familiar to now, in a double category, though, we have something else that's strict and that can be composed. We have these squares. These squares can be on top of each other, these boundaries. There are these two cells like this. We can have this one, and then we can have this one. And those compose strictly. So those are arrows in this category, right? Each of those squares is an arrow in that category. Remember, this is the category of objects and vertical morphs. This is the category of horizontal, so pro arrows and two cells. So if we have a so a, an arrow in C1, an arrow here is a two cell. And if we have two of those, one in here, one here, and they're joined by an object within this category in common. What's an object in C1? What's an object two here? Two cells. It's a, it, an right. object here is a what? The morphisms here are two cells. What's an object here? What's first and foremost an object that happens to have a source and target? It's a what? God, pro arrows, right? Pro arrow. It's a pro arrow. It's an object here. It's an object and it happens to have a source of target. Just like a open stock flow diagram is an object, happens to have a source and target. Mm -hmm. That's how I think about it, obviously. Um, an open graph is a graph. It's a thing, but it has a source and target. Um, think the feet. One input, one output. Okay, okay. Um, so if we have a cell like this and a cell like this, and they share in common an object in C1, and an object in C1 is a pro arrow. 
if they share this in common, they can be composed to get an arrow in C1. What's an arrow in C1? What's an arrow here? It's a what? This is a category of objects and vertical morphisms. This is a category of pro arrows and what? What's an object in this category? It's a two cell. It's a two cell. The objects here are objects. The morphisms here are vertical morphisms. The objects here are pro arrows. They have an M resource and target. The morphisms here are two cells. So we get, if we have these two joined by a common pro arrow, we can compose them vertically and get another square. And it's strict as can be. Again, quoting direct prog. It's all happy. It's just composition in C1. All we're doing is we're, we're composing in this guy. We were composing in this guy earlier, composing the vertical arrows. Now we're composing in this guy. We're composing these squares because they're just morphisms here. They just can and they're they're strict. If and they're you know they're they're associative. So if we have F, you know alpha and beta and gamma, and we have alpha beta and then gamma, it's the same as alpha and then beta then gamma, right? That's what these are. And each of these guys has a source. Well, each of these guys is a cell. And it has a source, which is an object in this, which is a pro arrow. So each of these has, has a, an object in C1. Um, you know, okay, so it has a, yeah, so, so it, it, and this is kind of its co-domain and its domain, I think. Um, and each of these guys, these objects here, the pro arrows, has an identity in one of these. Okay, so that's vertical, strict, strict. Yeah. Vertical morphisms, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The top left means the two arrows in C1, two arrows. These one, arrows. this one? Yeah. One, two set. Sorry, are you talking about this one here? They are composed by an object in C1. C1, yeah. an object in C1 is, is a pro arrow, right? It's a pro arrow. Right. So this so is an arrow. Share... In, the two cell is an arrow. arrow in C1. In, the two cell is an arrow in C1. This is an arrow in C1, but they share a common object in C1, which is a pro arrow. Hmm. Mm. Mm. I think we lost uh, each other. Okay. Um, let's let's consider this now. Um, that this is this is key. Uh, let's consider these these horizontal ones. Okay. So this is all strict. All we're doing is we're composing in this category. And we're composing in this category. The morphisms in each category. Morphisms here are vertical arrows, composing them here. Morphisms here are two cells, we're composing them there. Strict. Okay, so what do we what do we have here? So what do we have here? Well, so these are just composition within each of these categories, respectively. Here for the the vertical morphisms here, which are these guys here for the morphisms here, which are two cells. And so yeah, what do we have this way? Well, we have horizontal composition according to this thing, which is by functor, and it's and, and as often happens with functors, you can make it associative not on the nose, but up to up to some comparison, some wiggle room. That's what these these ones are. So what does this say? Okay, look. Let's start with this one. If you have an arrow in C1 and another arrow in C1, so we're dealing with this this category. Here it's called D1, but it's, it's same same same. So if you have an arrow. So, so if you have a, excuse me, an object in this, what's an object in this category? 
What's first and foremost an object? It happens at a source and target. It's a what? What? What is it? What is it? Sound like Papagena. What is it? Object objects are pro arrows. Are pro arrows, yeah. So if we have a if we have a pro arrow and a pro arrow joined by an object in C0, what's an object here? It's a it's a what? What's an object in D0? It's just a plain, plain old object. object. Yeah, it's object. just a plain old object. So if we have a horizontal, a pro arrow, a horizontal one, the Lucy one, pro arrow. And another pro arrow, and they're joined at a common object. We can compose them with this thing. Here it's shown as it's just kind of the tensor D here, it's this, but but same same. Um, and we get a pro arrow of this kinda. So like up to a certain a certain comparator. Um, um and I, I know that may freak you out but but I, again I, I want you to think like we deal with this in programming languages all the time if we have a pair of uh of a you know an int and a char and a real so if we have an int and a char as a pair and then we take a pair of that and a real it's not precisely the same type as taking a int, a pair of an int, and a, a pair of a char and a real. It's not exactly the same, but it's the same information. It's kind of, you know, it's it's isomorphic, right? Um, so, but it's not on the nose. It's not exactly the same as each other. Um, it's kind of the same, and that's what this is kind of capturing. Same thing here. Um, so if we have an arrow in C1, what's an arrow in C1? What's an arrow here? What's an arrow? It's a what? An arrow in this category is a what? Two cell. Two cell. This is the category of objects and vertical morphisms. So the objects in this category are objects. The, the morphisms here are vertical morphisms. The objects here, first and foremost, are objects, are pro arrows. The morphisms here are two cells. So if we have a two cell, we have another two cell, and they share an arrow, an arrow in C1, they, they're bordered by an arrow in C0. What's an arrow in C0? What's an arrow here? This is the category of objects and what? It's a vertical arrow. Vertical right? morphism. So if you yeah. have this and this and they share a vertical morphism dividing them, then we can compose them horizontally. This is this is, so this pro arrow is labeling this. This is composition of squares. And we get another square horizontally. But it's not necessarily exactly associative, it's associate kinda. Kinda. Um just like that, you know. An expression tree of a plus a plus b plus c think about sort of nested you know um c is it's not exactly the same as a plus b plus c but it's it's the same information right um okay so vertically these things compose just within each category it's just composing the vertical arrows here, it's just composing in this category. The vertical composition of two cells is just composing in this category, strict as can be, these ones. This is where you get the Lucy things. This is where you get the wiggle room. This is where you get the, and in case you're thinking about it, when we use two categories to describe open systems, maybe we have graph, a and graph B as an open graph A, open graph B, we compose them. And then we compose that with open graph C. It's not exactly, exactly the same as 
open graph A composed with open graph B and then open graph C, but it's it's um, you know cl very very close. It's not on the nose. It's up to a certain mapping between them, um, and and that's exactly what what we're doing. So so look this this composition that we get here, like pro error composition, <clears throat> is only associative up to isomorphism. We said that like when we have a right a pair of a int and a char as a pair and then a real, it's not the exact same as an int in a pair of a char and real, but it's isomorphic. We can go from one to the other losslessly, right? That's the same information. And, and, it's, and it's this idea here. It's it's up to isomorphism. We have these the the these uh associators. So we have you know um G after F and then H is not exactly the same as F and then G after H or, or H after G, but it's it, it's uh, vertically invertible, as she says. You can go from one to the other. It's kind of, yeah, it's basically the same up to, to isomorphism. Mm -hmm. That's the associated. So this is purely for the horizontal thing. This is strict. This is strict, vertical, vertical. We're just composing within those categories vertically. Um, normal strict stuff, but going horizontally, that's where we have um, this um, for for pro arrow composition. Um, these are pro arrows; they have the little tick mark, right? Um, and notice this is a two cell that kind of kind of says how these two are related. This is called a comparator. It's a comparator. Okay. Uh, these are invertible. Um, they're also they're, they're also functorial, which we, we may get into um, next time. And notice there's a unitor too. And what this is saying is if you have like if you have a morphism, um, so if, if you have a if you have a pro arrow, mm, one of these, and then you um and and then you have an identity pro arrow um uh something that serves as identity pro arrow and you put them together it's not the exact same as the thing that you combine with the identity but it's invertible um up to invertibility so it's it's um uh we have every object here has a object that serves as its identity pro arrow, but it doesn't, when you compose with it, with this rule, or with this rule, um, it doesn't leave it totally unchanged. It leaves it up unchanged up to kind of a invertible thing. It's kind of like, I think of it as like in programming languages, you know, like in Haskell, if I take an int, and I pair it with unit, the thing that only there's only one of them, one possible value for it. It's it's not exactly an int, but it's the same information as an int. I can go from one to the other losslessly, right? I I, I could have a, a pair of int and unit, and from that I can just get an int, or given an int, I can have a pair of int and unit. There's no extra information, but they're not truly, truly, truly the same in a type sense but they are isomorphic um, or they're invert there's an invertible mapping between them. All right, I know this is confusing, but the point is when we go horizontally, it's not on the nose and that's useful. So I don't know if you remember, I mean, UJ, you may remember this from this, from class like two weeks ago or something. Um, like Xiaoyan and I, when we introduced structured cospans, we talked about the category of structured cospans where we have objects are objects are the feet and 
and morphisms are an open stop flow diagram with those feet. That, that wasn't quite true. We had to deal with isomorphism classes of open stock flow diagrams. Oh, man. Why, why do we have to deal with that? Because it wasn't associative up to the nodes. If you compose an open stock, open stock flow diagram F with open stock flow diagram G and then H, it's not exactly the same as F and then G then an H. And, and so we had to deal with this isomorphism class because it wasn't exactly the same. We we couldn't make it just one open stock flow diagram. It had to be this weird isomorphism class. Here, the double category automatically captures that. It, it automatically has that as part of a rule. So now in a double category, my goodness, in a double category, we can have this just be feet, this be a structured cospan with these as feet. This be a structured cospan with these as feet. This be a homomorphism from one foot to another foot, homomorphism from one foot to another foot. And a, a two cell exists if there's a, if this structured cospan has an isomorphism down here. We'll, we'll be getting to this, but the point is we don't have to impose this kind of artificial thing of like an isomorphism class and kind of say, well, we, we have to keep it kind of wriggly because it, we we need to guarantee associativity up to uh, the nose. Um, no, no, no. This already allows us to not be associative on the nose, to just have these ways of going between it. So now we can have these just be honest to goodness stock flow diagram, honest to goodness, sorry, open stock flow diagram, open stock flow diagram. These are the foot of the stock flow diagram and, and this is a foot, this is a foot and this is a foot and this is a homomorphism between feet and everything is beautiful because this double category knows how to deal with associative, doesn't impose associative up to a nose. It gives us the wiggle room we need to capture the fact that composition of stock, open stock flow diagrams is not associative up to the nose. Composition of open causal loop diagrams is not associative up to the nose. It's associative in an invertible way. You know where you meant. Okay. Um, so it's an awful lot here. And I, I, I don't want to, you know, load more, but there's a thing called the middle four interchange law, which is if you have four of these next to each other, you can either compose horizontally this one and these two and compose horizontally these two, kind of like this. Uh, 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 no, uh, yes, this and this, that's these two. This and this, that's these two. And then compose more vertically. And it has to be the, it has to be the same. I think it's equal. Um, I think it's equal but I'm, I'm not positive, as, as doing vertically first. So this guy, this guy vertically, um, this guy, this guy vertically, and then composing those two gals uh, horizontally. Um, uh, th those are the same, this middle four interchange law. Um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll stop here. Oh, well, maybe, maybe I'll just say, you know, and we'll go over this again. Go over it again. Believe me, I've seen this doing so many times. It just takes a long time before it gets through this thick skull of mine. Let, let, let's give some examples. I've been appealing to some like open stock flow. Uh, here's rel. This is a set. This is a set. This is a set. This is a set. This is a relation between sets. That's the pro arrows. This is a function between sets, mapping one set to the other. It's a function. This is a relation. So we could say, you know, that um, uh, that S um, and T are related to each other through R. Um, um, and there's a two cell if here, so for, for R here, U here, V here, R prime here. There's a two cell here linking these up. 
this frame doesn't need a two cell. It, it's not sufficient for a two cell, but this two cell, it, it is necessary to have a two cell that you have a frame. And this, this frame will have a two cell if, if, if S and T are related with R um, and, and U of S and V of T are a member of R prime. Um, then this is a two cell in this category. There's a two cell that maps between them, uh, or well, I don't know that to say it maps, it, it relates these. So here it's kind of encoding a nice thing, right? A, a very nice thing that we have this kind of two relations and this one is kind of the you know, has this nice relationship here with these with these kind of mapping. So if S and T are a member of R, um, there's a two cell if U of S and V of T is a member of R prime. If so, for a given R, R prime, U and V, we'll have a two cell here. Kind of kind of sweet, right? It's like the two cells say, hey, there's something nice, nice is going on. Um Okay, uh, we'll, we'll come back and, and talk about these. Um, here's a span one. So we have, these are, so objects are objects in some category. Um, more uh, vertical arrows are arrows in that category. These are just mm -hmm. arrows in that category. In a plain old category. Pro arrows are spans like this. And there's a, so if we have S and T and S prime and T prime, there is a two cell here. If this is a commuting diagram. Um, so if there's a, this, uh, this commutes here and this, this commutes here, then there's a two cell. And um, uh, you may, guess, and you'd be correct, guess, that this is the basic idea, but with cospans that we get with, with cospans. So this is, this is L, the L functor promoting the foot to be an object in category X. Um, this is uh, the L functor promoting this foot to be a category of X. Um, these are the corners, uh, and L prime and, and this. And there's a two cell. So an object here is an object of uh, is, um, object of okay, okay, a um, okay. This is interesting. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm a, uh, that, oh, I see, I see. I got it, got it, got it, got it. The, so the objects are in A. Okay, these are in A. Um, vertical morphisms are morphisms. They map from this foot to this foot, this to, foot to this foot. A horizontal cell is a structured cospan of this form. So this is object A, but it, but when we consider the structure cospan, it's the structure cospan from L of A here, L of B here, and, and we have uh, something in the apex here. Um, and there's a two cell here. So this is the horizontal, the pro arrow. Um, and there's a two cell. If we can map from this pro arrow to that one, then there'll be a, a, a two cell if this is a commuting diagram. Um, so this is one, say, structure stock flow diagram, structured um, open stock flow diagram, structure co-span, stock flow diagram, structure co-span for a stock flow diagram. Um, uh, and um, we have the feet over here, and these output feet. And the question is, does this commute? In other words, if we have the thing at the apex, if there's a mapping between them like this, that's a homomorphism in category X, the, the condition for it to be a commuting diagram is appear in category X. If there's a homomorphism from this open stock flow diagram, the apex thing at the top, from this one to this one that makes this square commute, then then there's a, a two cell uh, between these. 
And this is a particular open stock flow diagram. Now, not some morphism, it's a particular one. Um, um, it's a structured ghost man. It's very specific structured ghost man. And these, uh, and, and this will have a kind of a mapping between these structured coast band. That's our two cell. It's just kind of how to go from this structured coast band to that one in a way that everything holds. We, we, we sort of um, have this nice relationship between these. Okay, um, I've gone over too much. This stuff, there's a lot there. And believe me, I've gone over this like 20 times myself. 30 times. I don't know. It just takes time. And I've thrown too much probably at you. I want you to think about it. I'll, I'll post this. Um, and we'll come back to it. And we'll build these strings. We build this. And we'll build this. And we'll build on it. And after a while, it'll get very natural. Yeah, C0 is objects and vertical arrows. C1 is... Pro arrows are considered as objects. They happen to the source of variant in two cells. Um, uh, in two cells, as is more. And this will grow. Why are we doing this? Right? Because it's really natural for a lot of our things, particularly open stock flow diagrams. But when we combine it with open, with two theory, double theories, that's how CAT Collab works. And it's going to give beautiful consequences, powerful consequences. It's quite, quite astounding. So we use it for open, capture this open stuff, and, and we don't have to deal with these equivalence constants anymore. And we're going to get all these things like finding motifs, finding all negative feedback loops in this diagram, no matter how, how big the negative the, the how many arrows are in it, we can find them all as a morphism in a certain category. It's just awesome. Um, we can reason out the composition of the stock flow diagrams in this very, and open stock flow diagrams in this very natural way. It'd be really, really nice. So we'll be getting there. I know it's painful. It takes time. It grows on you. I'll tell you, it grows on you. And it turns out there's really wild things you can do with categorical databases, double theories, categorical database. Evan has a whole talk. Uh, we can have an internal logic associated with them. You can do database operations just within the category. It's awesome. It's awesome. John Bai says two cat, or excuse me, double categories are taking over the world slowly. And we might as well get ahead of it. Might as well get on top of it. And we can embrace cat collab. So I know it's painful. Thank you for your patience. And I think I'll pause my comments here. <laughs>